About two months ago, the DuPage County Board, through its chairman, announced that the DuPage County Board voted to support Mayor Daley's plan for the expansion of O'Hare International Airport. This was a very courageous act. Our guest today has some very impressive credentials. He has secured a AAA bond rating for DuPage County. At the same time, he has lowered property taxes and he has worked with state and federal officials to bring more than $80 million in various improvements to DuPage County. He and the board also have earmarked some $300 million in road improvements in DuPage County under the Illinois FIRST program. Our guest today is a graduate of Naperville Community High School. He earned his bachelor's degree at Illinois College in Jacksonville and graduated Phi Beta Kappa. He earned his law degree at Kent College of Law, Illinois Institute of Technology. He and his wife, Mary Beth, and their three children reside in Naperville. He has been an active and highly successful figure in DuPage politics for two decades. This native son of DuPage, long the bastion of Republican power in our state, now stands shoulder to shoulder with his party's biggest names. If I were a betting man, I would bet that the next Republican candidate for governor will be our guest speaker today, the chairman of DuPage County Board, Bob Schillerstrom. Mr. Chairman. Well, good afternoon. Thank you, Jay, I think. <laughs> I want to take this opportunity to thank the Civic Club for inviting me here today. I want to thank uh, Jay and thank Mr. Roser for the opportunity to come before you. It's not often that I have the opportunity to leave DuPage County, period, let alone to leave DuPage County and to talk about DuPage County. So thank you for your invitation and thank you for your hospitality. DuPage County, my, my goal as chairman of DuPage County is to protect and enhance the quality of life in the county. We think it's a great place to live, to work, and to raise a family. And my goal is to make sure that it remains that way. There has always been a certain amount of tension between DuPage County and Cook County and Chicago. And yes, Mayor, this is when I'm going to tell my story about Joseph Naper. When you look back at the creation of DuPage County, it was created by an act of the state legislature in 1839. Prior to that, it was part of Cook County. And there was a man by the name of Joseph Naper, who history knows as the founder of Naperville, who was a state representative at that time. And he was anxious to secede from Cook County and create his own, his own county. And he was having a, a few problems doing this in the state legislature. He happened to meet another state legislator at that time who had an agenda of his own. At that time, the capital of Illinois was Vandalia, and this particular legislator and a few of his friends wanted to move it to Springfield. That legislator was Abraham Lincoln. Now, legend has it that these two individuals sat down and they made a little arrangement. And the arrangement ended up in that Springfield is now the capital of our state, DuPage County now exists, and Abraham Lincoln went on to great things, and Joe Naper was really the first guy who had a very strong position of leadership for a number of decades in DuPage County. I tell that story just to show that there has been some tension, and uh, it has been ongoing from time to time. After that, DuPage County changed very little. The turn of the last century, it was about 30,000 people. It was like most other rural counties in Illinois. It was agriculturally based. 
And really the only thing that made it different from all the other downstate counties was its geographical proximity to Chicago, then a young, growing, dynamic city. Didn't really change much for the next 50 years, but after World War II, when our servicemen came back and they were looking for homes outside of the city, places where they could raise their family and with the advances that were made in transportation with the automobile and the railroad and the construction of roads, DuPage County began to grow at a rapid pace. By 1950, it was 150,000 people. And since that time, the only constant in DuPage County has been that it has grown and constantly changed. In 2000, it was 900,000 people, bigger than seven states in the union. All of our population projections indicate that it will exceed a million people in population in probably less than 10 years. It is also a job center. We have over 600,000 jobs in DuPage County now. All of our projections indicate that ultimately we will have an excess of 800,000 jobs. Since 1970, 46% of the job growth in the Chicagoland region has been in DuPage County. For the first time, DuPage County has more people commuting into it than commute out of it. And for the first time, more people live in DuPage County and work in DuPage County than, com than com commute out of it. It is truly a job center. And some of our leaders in the past have felt that perhaps DuPage County was self-sufficient, that we could function on our own and that perhaps we were an island in the region. And unfortunately, that may have been the approach that we have sometimes taken in the past. And that was probably bolstered by our own concerns with the development in DuPage County, because with growth and change comes responsibilities. We had a lot of infrastructure concerns. Obviously, when you have substantial growth, you have to worry about your road system. In the last 20 or 30 years, we have literally spent hundreds of millions of dollars on improving our internal road systems. When you have growth, and especially when you have a lot of growth in a lot of different municipalities, you have to worry about stormwater and flooding. And unfortunately, in the past 30 or 40 years, we have had a lot of problems with that. We have spent, once again, many, many millions of dollars addressing those problems. We passed a stormwater ordinance that was very, very innovative in its approach. It has been copied by many other municipalities, and our hope is that flooding for the 100-year storm event in DuPage County is going to be a thing of the past. We also recognize that if you're going to protect your quality of life, that you have to have strong law enforcement. We've invested many, many dollars into our legal system. In the 1890s, we had the same courthouse that we were using in 1990. Since that, and that, that, as a lawyer, that was very, very interesting and somewhat scary. Since that time, we've built a new courthouse. Uh, we've added on to it. We've built a new jail. We've built a new youth home. We have made substantial investment in our own infrastructure. We also recognize that in a changing county, a county that was going from rural to suburban to many places urban, it was very, very important to protect our environment and to protect open space. And I'm happy to say that we were willing once again to make an investment in that, investing hundreds of millions of dollars in the last 20 years to buy open space. And we are very, very confident that when the ultimate build out comes to DuPage County that approximately a quarter of the county will remain as open space in perpetuity. But as you can see, during this period of time, we've kind of turned inward. We look to deal with our problems. Our days from just being a bedroom community where our people commuted into the city and commuted out, those days were over. And we spent a lot of time and a lot of money seeking to address those problems. But as time went on, we recognized the fact that we were not an island, that we were part of a region, we were part of a dynamic region, and we had regional concerns. For any of you, and I know there's a lot of people out there from DuPage County who ever tried to take the Eisenhower down to Chicago on a Friday night, I'm sure you're just like me and my, my wife, we asked, why, is, why can't somebody do something about this? And it's a regional thing. It had to be addressed. And to the credit of Governor Ryan, he did address it. He, he un, unstrangled the hillside strangler. 
Unfortunately, we just pushed the problem a little bit down closer to uh, Halstead and, uh, and Austin, and we need to address that. But when we looked at regional concerns and regional projects, one of the big things that jumped out at us was O'Hare Airport and access to it, western access. We'd look at the map. We'd look at the map that uh, looked at uh, O'Hare, and you can see I-90 that comes east and west and goes over uh, the airport to the north. And then you have I-94 that comes up from the south and goes into the east. And that one major ingress and egress into the airport on the east side in Cook County. And for us in DuPage County and those people out west in Kane County and DeKalb County and LaSalle County, it didn't make much sense that there wasn't a western way into the airport. And if you look at the road system, you look at the Elgin O'Hare Expressway, the expressway that doesn't go to Elgin and it doesn't go to O'Hare. <laughs> it's fairly obvious that there's something missing from the puzzle. And it's Western Access. Now let me define Western Access for you as I understand it and as the county board understands it and as I think the city of Chicago and Cook County understand it at this point. It is the extension of the Elgin O'Hare Expressway from Route 53 to the western boundary of the airport or York Road. And, and the and is the important, it is the extension of Ring, War, Ring Roads north from that terminus to I-90 and south to 294. If we don't have those ring roads, what, we, what happens is we can get into the airport, but still a tremendous amount of that traffic will be dumped into our local streets and our local roads, and we have substantial pro problems with congestion in that area now, and when you look at a comprehensive traffic solution, we must have the ring roads. And that complicates things dramatically. And looking at the history of Western Access, that's what the problem was. Because when you talk to people philosophically about Western Access, they would say, I'm in favor of it. If you talked about, if you talked with representatives from the city, they would say, we're in favor of Western Access, but we think that those ring roads should be out in the suburbs. They cannot be on airport property. They should go out and they should go through Bensonville and Elk Grove Village. The problem with that was that it devastated those neighborhoods and those cities. And you could understand why the Suburban O'Hare Commission was formed and why they were opposed to Western Access as proposed by the city. But conversely, if you listen to what the suburbs said, they said, well, Western Access has to go across the airport property. And I mean, it has to go right across the middle of the airport property. And in doing that, their position was, well, there can't be any expansion of, of O'Hare Airport. And the thing that I think was different about our approach, the approach that we've taken in the last couple of years was that we felt maybe there was a middle ground. Maybe Western Access shouldn't be held hostage anymore. Maybe in DuPage County we couldn't afford to have it held hostage anymore because there were so many opportunities that Western Access brought not only to our county but to the region. If you compare Bensonville, which is to the west of the airport, and you compare it with Rosemont to the east, I personally think that Rosemont, the way it has developed, is more desirable than Bensonville. Now, I'm going to get in trouble for saying that, but I think it's pretty clear. And in Rosemont, you have hotels, convention centers, office buildings. You have the type of development that communities generally really want. And on the western side, you have some areas that need some redevelopment. I will tell you, that redevelopment will not take place without Western Access. It only makes sense that that redevelopment will take place. There's no reason why what's taking place in Rosemont can't take place in Bensonville. That would be good for our county, it would be good for our communities, and it would be good for our region. It would also help with the transportation concerns that we have over there, the truck traffic on the local roads, because it would allow those tra that traffic to get into the airport. We have many, many businesses now that are on the west side of the airport that need to get into the airport. They're right there, and what they have to do is they have to win their way through our local, our local streets and roads, which creates environmental problems, it creates congestion problems, and it just creates an, in an in inability for us to really progress in those areas. Western access would be very, very 
beneficial to DuPage County and to the region. And we, at the DuPage County Board, we, we proposed this sort of middle ground. We said there's no reason why Western Access has to forestall or foreclose development at the airport, and there's no reason why it has to go right through these neighborhoods. Maybe there is a middle ground. And what we proposed was that the ring roads would run on airport property, but at the very edge of airport property. What you have is you have York Road, you have the boundary of the airport, and then you have railroad tracks. And we proposed that a corridor be developed just inside those railroad tracks. The corridor would allow expansion to take place at O'Hare. Probably what we would end up having to do is to depress the road a little bit so that it didn't get in the way of the flight pass. But we hired engineers. We had them look at it. We said, is this possible? It seems to make sense. It seems to be a common sense approach. It seems to be something that perhaps everybody could live with. The engineers came back and said this is very doable. We presented this to the Suburban O'Hare Commission, and we presented it to the city of Chicago. And the city of Chicago, much to their credit, when they came out with their O'Hare modernization plan, for all practical purposes, they included the Western Access Plan that we had proposed. And I think it was a gigantic step forward on their part. It was a break with their position in the past. And I think it was a bold move. And I think what it did was it allowed us to believe that there was an opportunity for us to work with them for the benefit of the region. Now, there were a couple of other factors that came along that I think had a very substantial impact on our decision to, be, to come out in favor of O'Hare expansion. The first one was you find when you're in positions such as I'm in and the county board is in that sometimes we take positions and those p positions become written in stone and we wonder why is that our position and you hear well that's always been our position and that's not necessarily bad but I think when you have a place like DuPage County where your only constant is change, that that's a dangerous position to take, that you have to be willing to rethink your positions every now and then, to be open-minded, and to recognize that times change, and maybe as a leader, you need to change with them. And I think that was a motivating force, certainly for myself, and also for the county board. And another very practical thing that came along was I have, a, I have an opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. on a regular basis, basically to lobby or, as my wife says, beg for the county. And, and my philosophy is the people of DuPage County send a lot of money to Washington, D.C., we have a lot of needs in DuPage County, as I've told you. We have a lot of infrastructure needs. And I think it's only right that from time to time they help us. And we have a great congressional delegation, and they have been very, very good to DuPage County. Uh, Speaker Hastert has been excellent. Uh, Senator Durbin, who's on Senate Appropriations, has been very good to us. Um, Congressman Lipinski, who is on uh, House Appropriations, has been good to us. Uh, Congressman Biggert, who is one of our congressmen, has worked very hard on our behalf. Uh, people in Congress love Henry Hyde. We have a great delegation, and our other members from uh, Illinois have also done a very good job on our behalf. And, and Congress has treated us well. They have sent money back to us for the last couple of years. We have a unique opportunity this year with uh, T3, with the Federal Transportation Bill. Every five or six years, what Congress does is they do a special bill where they appropriate funds on a multi-year basis for transportation. And this makes sense, because if you're going to do a big infrastructure project or a transportation project, it is a multi-year project. You have to uh, do the engineering, you have to acquire the land, and then you have to build the project. And if, if you have to worry about the budgetary process every year, it's going to make it very difficult for projects to get done. Congress has recognized this. They did T21 about five, six, five or six years ago. And unfortunately, Illinois, our region, and DuPage County didn't do very well in that bill. We were a donor state. We sent more money in than what we got back. And that just doesn't make any sense because Illinois has all kinds of infrastructure needs. Certainly, the Chicagoland region has all kinds of infrastructure needs. 
And with Denny Haster being the Speaker of the House and with having the congressional delegation that we do, we have a unique opportunity this year. And one of the things that I learned from going out there and talking to the staff members on the Transportation Committee was that perhaps the most important thing for us, if we were going to get some of that federal money to do some of these projects, and I guarantee you we cannot do a project like Western Access that costs a billion and a half dollars without federal assistance. We must have that. What they said was, if you want to get federal money, you have to be on the same page. You cannot be fighting amongst yourselves. You cannot have one person coming in here and saying, we want this, and another person saying that. If Illinois wants to get their fair share, you better come in on the same page. And it made sense at that point that the Chicagoland region should be on the same page, that we should be asking for the same thing, and that we shouldn't be fighting amongst ourselves. And that may have been the precipitating event, the most important precipitating event, I think, that caused the county board to really take a good long look at this position and to recognize the fact that O'Hare expansion was good for the region, it was good for DuPage County, and that as a region, if we are going to compete with the other great regions of the world, and if we're going to bring back some of that federal money, that we better be on the same page, and I think that's what caused the county board to change their position. And, they, and it, wasn't, it wasn't close. It w the vote was 15 to 2. It was pretty much overwhelming. I think it was very clear that DuPage County was ready for a change, that they wanted to send the message that we want to be part of the region and we want to work. And obviously, I think if you look at what O'Hare expansion potentially brings to the region and to our area, there's good reasons for DuPage County to be a partner at the table. 195,000 new jobs. That is tremendous for our region. It's tremendous for DuPage County. $18 billion annually. There's no other way that we're going to bring funds like that in. Western access with ring roads, uh, as I indicated, uh, it's the best way to do it. There's less displacement. It allows for redevelopment on the western side of our, our airport, or on, on the western side of the airport and the eastern side of our county. Uh, helps our transportation system, and it helps all of the counties out to the west have a better opportunity to do business with the airport and to use the airport for general travel. It allows a western terminal to be located in DuPage County, which would be beneficial to our constituents and to everybody else once again. It allows for reconstruction of York Road. It allows for reconstruction of Irving Park Road, including the grade crossing at York and Irving, which, is the worst, which has been rated as the worst grade crossing in the state of Illinois. It allows for the extension of the CTA Blue Line from the east side of the airport to the west side of the airport and down the Elgin O'Hare extension, and we need additional public transit in DuPage County, and I'm looking forward to uh, uh, hearing Jeff Ladd. He's got some great ideas that are beneficial, once again, to the region and to DuPage County. Uh, we are hopeful of having a freight entrance on the west side of DuPage County, once again, to try and get as much of that traffic off of our local roads and to help business get in and out of the airport as quick as possible. We are hopeful of having two new parking structures on the west side of the airport, once again beneficial for travelers, for business, and also for DuPage County from a revenue point of view. We look forward to temporary tax assistance at, because there will be a gap period there when some of the, the existing structures go down and before new development takes place. We think that there is tremendous opportunity with the, the Elgin O'Hare Modernization Program for DuPage County and for the region. And that's probably the most important thing is for the region because if this region thrives, we all will thrive. And it's very, very clear that this region is in competition with other regions. Uh, if, we, if we allow air traffic to go elsewhere, it will. We will lose a unique opportunity and other regions will thrive and we may not. And if it, we want to send the message from DuPage County that we want to be part of the partnership, we want to be, we, we, want, to, we want to help the region become as strong and as powerful as possible. I think the county board, by a vote of 15 to 2, made, that, made their position very, very clear. And we look forward to working with the city of Chicago, with the state of Illinois, and with Cook County to strengthen our region as much as possible.
Thank you very much, and I'll take questions. Hi, my name is Joel Cohen, CEO Joel. of Richard Hoffman Corporation. I have a two-part question. How many opportunities are there truly for regionality in terms of the counties that surround Cook, in terms of some type of formal forum where you do get together and discuss county or regional issues? And the second question is, who actually named that the Elgin O'Hare Expressway? <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who named it, but you know, you know, there are a lot of formal opportunities uh, for people to get together. There's NIPSI and a variety of groups. I will tell you, I think probably the most effective way for things to happen on a regional point of view is just for people to sit down and talk. Uh, I've had an opportunity to spend a lot of time talking to John Harris, and I think just sitting down and talking with him gave us a lot of opportunity to see how we think. I had the opportunity to sit down with Mayor Daly, and I think that that's the best way to do things is for the leaders to sit down and, and just to talk like normal people do. Obviously, NIPSI and regional groups like that play a very important role, and but I, I, I think you can't just sort of shunt off the responsibility to them. Mm -hmm. The leaders have got to sit down and talk, and we'll be a lot more effective doing that than if we, uh, if we stay in our areas and don't. Thank you. Jeff Berkowitz, host and producer of Public Affairs, airing every Monday night at 8.30, <laughs> Channel 21. Throughout the city of Chicago, but not in DuPage, not yet. We'll have to work on that, Jeff. <laughs> we'll do it. Chairman Schillerstrom, you, uh, you mentioned your thanks to Congresswoman Biggert and to Speaker Hastert and to Senator Durbin, but you didn't mention Senator Fitzgerald. I was wondering, was that intentional? What would your, and what would your uh, thoughts be about your support of his reelection efforts in the year 2004? Well, let me answer, let me answer this. When I went to Washington two weeks ago, uh, one of the people that I went to see was Senator Fitzgerald. I went to see, well, I saw Senator Durbin. I saw our entire congressional delegation. I saw a variety of uh, staff individuals. Uh, I saw Congressman Lipinski. And one of my goals was, as that one staffer at Transportation told me, was to see if we were all on the same page. And I am happy to say that everyone said that they would be supporting Western Access. Uh, they would help us to uh, obtain funding for that. Senator Fitzgerald was on board with that. He said that he uh, felt that Western Access was a good project. He felt that uh, it was important that we work together to bring that money back to Illinois. And I expect him to be a partner in this, and he gave me every indication uh, that he would. Uh, the only person who, out of that group, that there was any reticence at all about was uh, Congressman Hyde. He said he supported Western Access. Uh, he supported bringing the funding back, but he had some problems uh, with the alignment. And that was really the only negative I heard about uh, Western Access as proposed by ourselves in the city of Chicago and the Elgin O'Hare Modernization Program. So I look forward to working with Senator Fitzgerald on this. I think that uh, he is going to be very helpful uh, regarding this particular project, and uh, I'll be supporting him. So you, you'll be supporting him for re-election? I, I will. Thanks. That's it, huh, Paul? <laughs> Thank you very much. I really appreciate this opportunity.